Here are today's top stories. President Duterte appeals to Congress to pass measures ensuring security of tenure and other benefits for workers. The DFA orders mandatory evacuation of all Filipinos in Libya amid escalating tension. Northern Mindanao reports a 7% economic growth rate this year. And the Moro Islamic Liberation Front commit to implement agreements for the betterment of the Banks of Moro. Good day, I'm Rom Dulfo. Welcome to the PNA Newsroom. Our top story, the Philippines joins the rest of the world in celebrating Labor Day. In line with the government's effort to protect workers, President Duterte called on Congress to pass the bill that will ensure security of tenure and other benefits. DGR Cindy Agtay with the news. President Rodrigo Duterte appealed to Congress to pass legislative measures to benefit Filipino workers, especially on security of tenure and self-organization. Duterte pointed out that although the executive has banned illegal contracting or endo last year, it is unfortunate how the plight of workers remains the same. On Labor Day last year, Duterte signed Executive Order 51 to ban the practice of endo, a practice that violates the employee's security of tenure. He also certified as urgent the passage of the Security of Tenure Bill which will require contractors to deem an employee working in the company for six months as a regular employee. The president hopes that Congress will follow suit by also passing bills to ensure that workers have the legal right to keep their jobs. Labor Day in the Philippines is declared as a regular holiday where workers get full pay. They are entitled to receive double of their basic pay if they work on a regular holiday. For the PNA Newsroom, I'm Gigi Arcelia Agtay. Simultaneous jobs and business fairs are held today as the country celebrates Labor Day. 29 job fair venues are opened nationwide with over 46,000 local and overseas jobs. Dolly says it aims to improve the employment situation in the country. Along with the job fairs, women workers also lauded the release of the Implementing Rules and Regulations or IRR of the Expanded Maternity Leave Law. The measure, signed with President Duterte on February 20, provides 105 days of paid maternity leave to all working mothers and an additional 15 days to solo mothers. Meanwhile, thousands of rallyists marched to the streets for their traditional Labor Day protests. The Union ng Mangagawa sa Agricultura expressed support for a petition to increase the minimum wage by 710 pesos. For its part, the PNP reminds protesters to refrain from vandalizing public property and leaving trash. It says maximum tolerance is practiced in maintaining security during the rallies. Malacanang is leaving to the wage boards to decide whether they will act on petitions to increase the daily minimum wage of private sector workers in Metro Manila and other regions. This after the TUCP sought for a 710 peso increase in daily minimum wage for workers. Presidential spokesperson Salvador Panelo says the palace will not interfere with the decision of the wage boards. The Department of Labor and Employment, or DOLE, earlier said it was unlikely that it would announce a wage increase on Labor Day. However, the board expressed openness to review the TUCP petition. We should not look at the minimum wage as the singular policy response to you know, answer for all the requirements of our workers. Uh, because if you overburden the policy, it, the tendency is for it to become weak. Local oil companies implemented a rollback on prices of liquefied petroleum gas or LPG in time for Labor Day. Oil firms announced a decrease of 20 centavos per kilo or 2 pesos and 20 centavos per 11 kilogram tank. Meanwhile, the price of auto LPG went down by 10 centavos per liter. The rollback was caused by the decrease in the contract price of LPG in the world market. Based on the data from the Department of Energy, an 11-kilogram LPG tank is expected to cost between 615 pesos to 800 pesos. The MMDA vows to push through with the provincial bus ban in spite of a petition in the Supreme Court. And another petition of the Supreme Court calls to stop the collection of bail deposit from the customers of Meralco. More on these and other news around the metro from Joyce Rocamora. 
the Metropolitan Manila Development Authority is pushing through with the closure of bus terminals along EDSA despite the petition of a COBE co-portilist at the Supreme Court to stop its implementation. MMDA traffic head Bong Nebria stressed that local government units in Metro Manila have committed to support the closure of the bus terminals. Challenging critics questioning the policy, he asked them to offer alternative measures to ease traffic congestion. Meanwhile, a petition before the SE seeks to stop Miralco from imposing and collecting bill deposit from its customers. In a 36-page petition, the petitioner said the imposition of bill deposit by Miralco, being a public utility, is illegal. The suit has also urged the court to order the Energy Regulatory Commission to implement a refund of the bill deposits to the consumers. In other news, the PNP warns those called in former police colonel Eduardo Sherto not to shelter the fugitive else they face charges. The PNP ordered a manhunt against Asherto for his involvement in a multi-billion peso shabu smuggling case. Asherto has a bounty of 10 million pesos prepared by Malacanang for his arrest. For the PNA Newsroom, I am Joyce Shohamora. Still to come, the DFA orders mandatory evacuation of all Filipinos in Libya amid escalating tension. The NGCP warns of possible rotating brownouts as the yellow alert is issued for the Luzon grid. More on these from the PNA Newsroom continues. I reaffirm my country's commitment to the collective vision of common prosperity through cooperation on the basis of mutual respect and as equal sovereign state. The Philippines is one with every responsible member of the international community in building a future that will be the envy of history. One that promotes global cooperation, yet and upholds and respects national sovereignty. Where national honor is married with the interest of humanity. And where the great challenges that transcend national borders are collectively addressed. This should be the new normal, and it is our interest to work together to make this a reality. Thank you. The Department of Foreign Affairs, or DFA, raises the alert level in Libya to four and orders the mandatory evacuation of Filipinos there. In a social media post, Foreign Affairs Secretary Teodoro Loxin Jr. said he reported to President Duterte the situation in Tripoli as fighting intensified around the capital. However, Loxin says the DFA cannot compel Filipinos in Libya to evacuate despite the raised alert level. Sharjadi Affairs El Mercato has also taken to social media to report the situation of Filipinos there. There are around 2,000 Filipinos in Libya with about 1,000 of that number living in Tripoli. Inflation in April likely eased between 2.7% to 3.5% based on the projection of the Banco Central ng Pilipinas. Higher domestic fuel and electricity prices are seen as upside risks to last month's inflation 
but may offset pressures with the continued decline in rice prices and by the peso appreciation. Monetary officials forecast this year's inflation to average 3% until 2022. Meanwhile, ING Bank senior economist Nicholas Mappa forecasts inflation this month at 3% following the decrease in rice prices. He says both the inflation forecasts and expectations point to within target inflation rate in the next two years. Northern Mindanao is showing its potential as an economic hub. This as the government reports rapid growth in the economy of the region. Rekti Pakulba with the story. The economy of northern Mindanao expanded by 7.0% in 2018 due to the accelerated growth of the services and industry sectors. Philippine Statistics Authority officer in charge Janeth Avis said in a news conference that services posted an accelerated growth of 8.9% in 2018. Industry likewise grew by 8.8%. Services accounts for 44.1% of the regional economy, while industry shares 35.6%. Avi said the robust performance of the services sector was propelled by the double-digit growth of 12.88% of transportation, storage, and communication subsector. Public administration and defense also expanded by 12.6%, while other services grew at a faster rate of 8.9%. The growth of the industry sector, on the other hand, was fueled by the construction subsector, which grew by 16.3%. Mining and quarrying also expanded at a faster rate of 14.6%, while manufacturing sped up to 6.6%. Myla Fe Aurora Carino, National Economic and Development Authority Region 10 Director, said, The dominance of the services and industry sectors is a testament that Northern Mindanao has gained a foothold as an industrial core and trade center in the country. For the PNA Newsroom, I'm Rachi Pakulba, Philippine Information Agency 10. The National Grid Corporation of the Philippines has declared a yellow alert status for the Luzon Grid. The NGCP says the power reserves in Luzon grew thin due to the unexpected shutdown of some power plants. A yellow alert notice means operating reserves have dropped below the required 647 megawatts contingency in Luzon. The NGCP warns that rotating power interruptions may or may not be implemented depending on the condition of the system. Consumers are advised to conserve energy to help avert manual load curtailment. Ten barangays in Cavite are announced drug cleared. Meanwhile, a strange weather phenomenon hit Pangasinan. More on this and other news from the provinces from Joyce Rocamora. In Cavite, ten barangays in Ceylon are declared drug cleared during a simple ceremony at the town plaza. These are Poblacion 3, Poblacion 4, Tubuan 1, Tubuan 3, Ulat, Carmen, Potingahoy, Luxuin, Balite 2, and Santol. The 10 villages have met the requirements of the Philippine Drug Enforcement Agency in the Barangay Drug Clearing Program of President Rodrigo Duterte. In Cebu, police threatened to press charges against anyone who defy legitimate police checkpoints set up for the May 13 midterm elections. Police Regional Office 7 Chief De Sina says the people are bound to respect the police personnel manning the road barricade for security purposes. Sina's reaction came after a convoy of three vehicles boarded by candidates ignored a police checkpoint at Barangay Kasambagan here on Sunday night. Meanwhile, severe thunderstorm and hailstorm struck Rosales, Pangasinan on Monday. Weather Bureau Pagasa says it is a normal phenomenon from March to May and is not related to the solar halo seen all over the province. Other than slight damage to the properties, there were no reported injuries due to the severe thunderstorm and hailstorm. For the PNA Newsroom, I am Joyce Rohamora. Up next, the government and the Moro Islamic Liberation Front commit to implement agreements for the betterment of the Bangsamoro. An Oriental Mindoro promotes its Pandang Gitab Festival to highlight the culture and beauty of the province. The PNA Newsroom returns after these reminders.
The Environment, Tourism and Interior Departments recommended to close Boracay for six months. To address issues such as illegal structures and faulty drainage systems that is affecting Boracay's prized beach. The last time in Andito is 2017. It's actually crowded. Sobrang dami ng tao. Everywhere, may kita mo talaga bars and drinks and masamakala talaga. We had more cases of skin disease. We had more cases of diarrhea. So, nagkasama-sama lahat ng mga agencies, tinignan ano ba ang plano natin sa Boracay, Compliance on Clean Air Act, Clean Water Act, at saka yung ating environmental compliance. When they started demolishing, we saw that there was action, that they put their money where their mouth is. Lahat ng nagamit na tubig ng customer, we collect it through our sewer lines, and then it goes through a treatment process sa treatment plant. It was nice that it happened. Finally, Buraga got the attention it is in deep need of. I think a lot of work was done during the closure. The water is clear, the oceans are clean, and there seems to be a lot of wildlife returning. We had, for the first time in 10 years, we had, we had turtle satching on, on the beach a couple of days ago. During the closure, you could see like the eagles came back and everything that we have had for a long time. Commercial pangao yung mga kondito eh, budan ting, galing una sibu. In the end, it's a good thing, yes. It was hard for us, but it was also a wake-up call. The beach was cleaned up and is officially set to reopen on October 26th. Wala nang nakumakain sa beach, bawal nang manigarilyo. Gumanda yung isla namin as in bumalik sa dati na ambience. We teach kids about pollution, solid waste management, because they're the ones who will sustain all the things that we're doing now. Government and MILF peace panels reaffirmed their commitment to fully implement the five-year-old comprehensive agreement on the Bangsamoro. In a special meeting in Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia on April 29, the parties vowed to focus on implementing the normalization track of the CAB, which involves the transformation of combatants, their families and communities. The joint statement was signed by Gloria Mercado, new chair of the Philippine Government Implementing Panel, MILF Implementing Panel Chair Mohagerek Bal, and Malaysian facilitator Dato Kamarudin bin Mustafa. The two parties also signed the compilation of all agreements between the government and the MILF. The meeting is the first following the successful ratification of the Bangsamoro Organic Law or BOL and the establishment of the Bangsamoro Transition Authority in the new Bangsamoro Autonomous Region in Muslim Mindanao. A visiting French tourism official has recognized the government-led rehabilitation efforts of Barakay in 2018. A South France Regional Director for Southeast Asia, Murad Tayebi, praised President Duterte for taking the initiative of the cleanup, Boracay marked its first year anniversary of rehabilitation last Friday, April 26. Sayebi says it is important to preserve Boracay's landscape as it attracts tourists from all over the world. He says the Filipino locals attracted him more to the Philippines as a tourist destination. In 2018, tourists from France reached over 74,000, posting a growth of 14.84% from the previous year. NAR4 News, Venezuela's envoy to the UN on Tuesday said the attempt by foreign powers to spark a civil war to open the doors for a military intervention from abroad and impose a puppet government in his country has failed. Venezuelan permanent representative to the UN, Samuel Moncada Acosta, said the government of President Nicolas Maduro acted rapidly and isolated the focal point of public disorder and the country is in total normality throughout the national territory. He said Maduro showed once again that his government is the fundamental and only guarantor of peace and legitimate constitutional order in Venezuela. The attempted coup, he said, has no roots in Venezuelan society as the majority of Venezuelans want to live in peace and with full exercise of their sovereignty, independence and right to self-determination. 
In sports, promoters Brico Santig of Benguet and JC Manangkit of General Santos City will receive awards from the WBC Asian Boxing Council. The 43-year-old Santig will receive the Pacific Region Promoter of the Year 2018, while the 26-year-old Manangkil will get the Archipelago Zone Promoter of the Year 2018. This will happen in May 22 at the Asia Hotel in Ratchadui, Bangkok, Thailand. Both Santig and Manangkil received the same awards last year. Santig is now based in Bangkok and is a top honcho of the Highland Boxing Promotion which operates in Manila, Benguet and Bangkok. Manangkil, on the other hand, is the president of the Sunman Boxing Promotion. Oriental Mindoro celebrates a festival of lights and music reflecting the simplicity of life in the province. The Pandang Gitab Festival is one of its latest attractions and a gateway to knowing their culture. Here's our report. Coined from the Filipino folk dance Pandango sa Ilaw, the Pandang Gitab Festival is a far cry from the usual drum beats of older and much famous festivals in the Philippines. For Dr. J. Mark Atienza, choreographer for the Baco delegation, the festival is festive in interpretation, yet it fully captures the culture and tradition of Mindoro. Street dancers donning colorful and glittery garbs Inspired from the traditional barotsaya, twirls and sways with a rural, lively tune of pandango to relieve the old and simple living of fisher folk in the island. The Oriental Mindoro's cultural event is inspired by the ritual dance of the wives from the coastal community of Mindoro as they pray for a safe voyage and bountiful catch. The pandang gitab came to being as a street dance activity at the 51st founding anniversary of Oriental Mindoro in 2001. Oriental Mindoro Tourism Officer Don Stephenson Caldas says, the festival has a big potential to attract tourists outside the province. Pandang Gitab surely has the potential to make Oriental Mindoro a popular tourist destination. For the PNA Newsroom, I'm Gigi Arcelia Agtay. Let's now check out the weather forecast for Metro Manila and the rest of the country. Here's another look at today's biggest stories. President Duterte appeals to Congress to pass measures ensuring security of tenure and other benefits for workers. The DFA orders mandatory evacuation of all Filipinos in Libya amid escalating tension. Northern Mindanao reports a 7% economic growth rate this year. And the Moro Islamic Liberation Front commit to implement agreements for the betterment of the Bank Zamoro. Thank you for watching another edition of the PNA Newsroom. To check out these and other stories, check the PNA website or follow the Philippine News Agency on Facebook and Twitter. For more stories about the government and how it served Filipinos, look for these hashtags on all our social media platforms and websites. And that's your daily dose of latest news and information that you need to know from the PNA Newsroom. I'm Rom Dulfo. Good day.